I've generated over $1.5 million online and generated multiple seven figures with over 140 of our students across different jobs, different countries, businesses. And so today I'm going to show you how to beat the banking system in a legal way so you can grow or even replace your income and spend more time with those you love the most. Because to me, that's the essential part of why I am investing. So let's take you into my iPad here and let's give you a quick overview of what the process would look like. If you wanna make a transition from a corrupt, outdated system called CFI, centralized finance, you, like, you know this as the dollar, the euro, the yen, whatever that would look like, you need to do an unplug and you need to look at something called DeFi. Now, if you look at something like DeFi, DeFi is actually an abbreviation for decentralized finance. Pretty similar to CFI. I'll give you a quick overview, overview in any minute right now. But if you get out of um, if you get out of DeFi, you can actually get two things out of that. You could get a multiplier on top of your money, times two, times five, times three, whatever, or you could get a percentage growth. Usually we talk about multipliers because as opposed to making money with the main coins like Bitcoin or Ethereum that don't move up too much because there's already a lot of liquidity in these projects, small cap altcoins that actually have a deflationary nature, meaning that they get scarcer every single day, will give you more of an asymmetric growth opportunity. Before diving into the complexity and the in-depth of this all, let's uh, keep it simple and let's get back to what we can do here. Because if we get out these percentages, we can essentially compound, okay? An easier term to say compound would be reinvest. Suppose you invest like a $500. I had multiple clients who did it. They landed at $20,000. I'll actually add an interview on top of the screen right now with Xander, 18 years old, started with us 500 euros, currently at more than 20,000 euros at the age of 18. Now look, what he did is pretty close to what I'm saying right here. He took centralized money, invested it into decentralized finance, made a multiplier, reinvested the money and made money on top of his money. And then you can re-enter again and again and again. Why would you pass CFI? Well, if you got fed and true money inside of DeFi, there's no point in really getting back to a centralized finance that's corrupt, but you could cash out eventually, put money on a visa, put money back into the currency that you use, or just basically get back right into DeFi again and pass CFI in a way where you use new money to get in. So um, look, to make things very, very simple here, CFI and DeFi are very, very similar. Essentially all CFI and DeFi are is like a Google Spring spreadsheet, right? There's a, uh, there's a part where money comes in, right? This is where that money comes in. And there's a part where money goes out, part where money goes out. That's all a banking system and a centralized and a decentralized economy are and do. Now there's a difference between both. In the centralized finance, we do have middlemen that are controlling and steering the dynamics of a market. Right now, we know this as inflation since 1971, when President Nixon removed the gold standard, money was not longer backed by gold. And so essentially it could be created out of thin air, mad money printing, crazy manipulation of the stock markets, getting rid of that market volatility like we see it in the Wall Street cheat sheet, making people afraid of something like crypto because there's true human emotion still involved, which is where the profit is at. And thus, as a return, people just like stick with the out, old outdated methods. But this is, this is corrupt because essentially the more money they print, right, the less value your money will hold. So yes, you still have the ability to have your CFI spreadsheet where money comes in and money goes out. But I bet that you're probably aware with the fact that money comes in like easier, like money comes in harder than it goes out. You know, like money comes in, money comes in, but then by the time it's out, like you barely remember it even came in. And that's the issue, right? On the other hand side, you would have DeFi, which is not steered by any human beings. It's steered by something called a smart contract. Now, what a smart contract does, it's, it's, a, it's a piece of rules that can be called on top of a blockchain, right? So if you have a blockchain, the blockchain can call certain functions that will be applied to the money that you invest, the centralized money, like a euro, a dollar, a yen, you invest that into crypto. There's a smart contract that can call certain rules. Now, here is where things get pretty interesting. Here's no human being involved. A smart contract can pull certain rules like make a liquidity pool, money goes into the liquidity pool, nobody can rock pull that liquidity pool. 
But the thing is, if you do what most people do, you will become a victim to people who can pull that liquidity pool, which is like meme coins where founders just like pull money out, which is like celebrity scams with the Kardashian or the Soldier Boy, where massive money comes in even before it gets launched by venture capitalists. And then by the time it's really life, they can just pull it all the way down to zero. So in this video, I want to give you a better understanding of how to actually do it. We're going to cover the first thing, which is going to be the money printing, literally how you can become your own money printer, or at least how you can set it up. Second one is going to be how to go about like your savings. Don't like, don't, <laughs> don't focus on my handwriting here. This is really not my strength. Okay. So like a savings account. And then we're going to be looking at the real world usage. It's really been a while since I've been writing things down. So yeah, this is really, I should be ashamed. I have a doctor's, uh, a doctor's writing, but I also got the doctor's salary. So, <laughs> and I'm saying that to joke. I'm not saying that to brag. Anyway, like what we're doing here is all these steps that we're going to be filling in. So how do you become your own money printer? Doesn't that sound a little bit shady? How could you really bypass the inflation? How could you really, without your vote, succeed in allowing yourself to keep track of your own money? Well, first, it's by understanding that you will manage your money better than the government will, right? Every single time when you pay taxes and everything, it's not like that money right away goes to the next bridge or the hospital. In fact, they do everything to save through businesses like McKinsey, and then they, they do everything to, to make more profits. But again, let's stick to the basics here. So one is the printing. Now, how do you go about printing? It's by truly understanding the mistakes here in the centralized finance and CFI. So there's an A scenario and there's a B scenario. The A scenario is going to be CFI, right? Where massive money printing is decreasing the value of what you hold. On the other hand side, we could look at something. This is called inflation, by the way. On the other hand side, we could look at something called deflation. Now, deflation is essentially the exact opposite, okay? All of you probably know Bitcoin. That's what brought you to this video. Bitcoin, it takes four years straight for Bitcoin to actually see a halving. This is where people or devices that create new Bitcoins called miners, they get half of the rewards for doing what they do, making Bitcoin scarcer. That's why after the elections, we see how the money flows back and then we see this appreciation. It's perfectly time to, after the elections, push the markets up. While macroeconomics push the markets up as well, like the elections, you can still state that the halving that happened before actually has like the wake up after the elections. It's like a, it's a thing that always happens, you know, perfectly timed for some reason. Now, look, in, in the B scenario, we do have deflation. And so the best way to put it is like this. Imagine you are the owner of the last iPhone on this planet, right? So you own the last iPhone, or you might own the last bottle of water, whatever that would be, something that is very, very scarce. Everybody in this world, like I got a cup of water right here, everybody would like to drink, right? If there's no water, how will we survive? That's how scarce things can get. So if this would be the last water cup in this case, people would beg, there would be a starving crowd for them to get and consume that water. Same with the last iPhone. Imagine it goes for an auction. What happens to the price? Supposing that this really is the last iPhone. The price massively shoots up. And that's what happens. It's a very simple supply and demand scenario, but yet the most simple things are getting ignored by the masses. So if there's less of something, the value of this shoots up. Now, what happens if in DeFi, decentralized finance, there's rules in the smart contract that make scarcity increase with the day? Right? No matter what the markets do, no matter if Trump works in a McDonald's, no matter if there's a war in any country over the world, no matter what happens, scarcity gets driven up. That's why I have such an amazing result with both myself as well as all the people that I serve. Because even during the pandemic, even during the bear market, this scarcity was going up. People were waiting for the lawsuit of Ripple to go over. They were waiting for Bitcoin to even have the halving. We were making money and we still are making money at scale. The game is just starting. So the way you print money is by getting into assets that get scarcer daily. 
Second point would be the savings account, right? So why a savings account? Well, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of the current rates of, of traditional savings accounts, but they're as small as 0.11%, something like that per annum. So that's pretty low. So what do we do? Imagine you have like this deflation that kicks in, pushing up the value of what you hold because it gets scarcer with the day. That puts you in a situation where you can make as much money as the people that we work with. So if now your current net worth is shooting up right here, then we could state that you become in a position where you have more money. In this situation, usually, like if you would, if you would look at the traditional bank, right? Just to make my point easier here about DeFi, let's call it the DeFi bank. People usually go to a bank to do two things, right? So this is a client walking to the bank. He can buy, like he can get money out of an ATM or he could sell, he could put the money back in, right? Money in, see digits on the screen, money out, see digits on the screen go down. You can have physical cash or you could put physical cash back into the wall. This is the thing, like on the other hand side, what you can do in DeFi, besides this, that's what most people do on Uniswap, get Ethereum, get this currency out, blah, 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 they, they, they are swapping, right? You can also be a liquidity provider. This is one of the ways that you can make a, a saving, which is between going from currency A to currency B, right? People need liquidity. They need money in the markets for you to be able to execute the transfer. So if you wanna go from asset A to asset B, Imagine, to put this simple, imagine there's a guy that sells oranges in Spain and a guy that has fries in Belgium and they meet on a Spanish island, right? There's sufficient amount of oranges, but the Belgians don't have sufficient amount of rice. Now, there's an issue because the business they want to start together is not really possible since, they're more, since there's more oranges than fries. So if they would go about trading, there would be a lack of asset B as opposed to asset A. Therefore, sufficient liquidity is needed for trades to possibly happen. So for this usual consumer to be able to get A in and get B out, there needs to be sufficient liquidity, cash in these assets. That's where you could be providing liquidity. And as soon as the transfer happens, you could make a fee. That's what I'm doing right now. It's making me over $7,000 a month based on what I'm simply providing on myself this is one of the ways, right? There's things like yield generation where you could have an APR percentage based on you like getting money into, into a pool and then you would get money back out. It's pretty cool. Uh, the only disadvantage is that this is a little bit lucrative, you know, like it's all based on your percentage of the share of like what you personally hold. And if that share for some reason goes down and you don't get your money out, you usually use the money for an active lifestyle and your share might decrease. But this is cool. There's a saying that I use, which is called uh, earn active, spend passive, which allows you to, again, go back to this first slide here where you get your active earned money into DeFi, and then you earn passive. That immediately has an impact on your lifestyle, which brings us to point number three, because every single student that I work with, and this is such an amazing story, like has the ability to see a lifestyle change. I had a couple amazing people. In the beginning, I remember how they were struggling. They had basically invested a good amount of money. So they had a bag of money here and they basically invested that money with a broker in Dubai, super shady. You know it, big promises. This guy was like, yeah, if you invest your money with our Forex broker bot, whatever, you're gonna get X percent per annum or per year in this case. All fun and games until they wanted to pull the money out. They couldn't, the money was on a withdrawal lock. It sucks, you know, it's shady. So they were struggling and they came to me with the general intention to become better, to learn more, to find a community that right now, like leading the community with me because they're so passionate. They finally found something truthful. And the thing is, I found them, like in the beginning when I when I found them, they, they were struggling, right? They had a family, two children, amazing people. They were struggling financially. I was able to meet them at someday in Disneyland. They were in my community. They were like, hey, we're getting to Disneyland Paris. We met up there. I had tears in my eyes just seeing how this is transitioning into new lifestyles. Same with TC, he made over $1.5 million with us. He went literally from sitting at home all day, being like on a, on a trader. He was trading the markets, like nightmares, all that stuff. He literally had this lifestyle change. So what you gotta know is that this uh, amount of money that you could make inside of crypto, this immediately has a lifestyle change. Okay, so this changes your life.
if you take action, if you show up, if you have the right knowledge and the right guidance at the right time. That's all that matters, right? And so if you have these three and you check these three boxes, you can have an immediate effect on the lifestyle that you live. That means that you can have different clothes. That means that you could have different trips. That means an economy becomes a business class. But the the, the most wealth, like the, the biggest ultimate of, 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 of wealth here is that you can spend more time with the people that you love. And that's personally my luxury. Just being able to travel across the world, spend time with these people that I love the most. For me, that's the true luxury. And so at last, and this is something I love to do as well, which is called compounding, right? So compound in my beautiful handwriting there. <laughs> so compound, what that is, is imagine you invest, like, for example, like Sander, you invest the 500 euros, right? In his first month, that 500 euros, if you don't believe me, go watch the video with him or while you're on it, watch another of these videos. Got five lined up, by the way, for this week alone. Gonna be pushing them out soon. But like 500 to euro, 500 euro to a fa to a thousand in his first month. Thousand net profit, by the way. So 1500 grand total. Took that all the way to 20,000. So what you could do right now is what if you could consistently get a percentage on a percentage on a percentage until the end of the cycle, you cash out before the bull cycle top happens, you swap back into something like DAI, don't do USDT, it's tether, you know, like inflation stuff, like and the tether is shady, you know. USDC is cool, but it's packed to the dollar. DAI, in this case, DAI, uh, D DAI, yeah, that's it, is packed to Ethereum and the dollar. So it's more like redundant, more safe. You could get your money in there, which would allow you to freeze the money that you made, allow the and the bull cycle top to basically drop again, and then you basically just get back in. That's marked around October 2025, but there's cycles to that, right? February, March, October, kind of like that range, you gradually want to get out. So the opportunity is still here. There's massive compounding that you can do. If you can get out before that bull cycle top, it's never going to be perfectly planned. You can freeze your money and then you can allow the markets to drop. You can get back in and you can compound again. And this is something so many people forget, you know? They're always eagerly just, just waiting for this lawsuit of some like X coin to go over for them to finally see they are at a break even. And if you're at a break even after a year, in my honest opinion, you wasted time. You actually disappointed yourself. There's a family around you that had set different expectations and you're always overworking just to be underpaid and overtaxed. So that's my explanation, guys. That's all I really had to share today. So if you just want to prove and help in setting this up, because I know it can be quite complex, like knowing what to invest into, how to secure your profits, and how to actually keep the strategy adapting to each and every market cycle, I would recommend going down below this video and book a call with myself or one of my team members where we can walk you through what the strategy could look like inside your life today.